Everyone wants to know how long the COVID-19 trials are likely to take. The shortest time in history for development of a vaccine for approval by the FDA was four years. I think given the efforts that are being um, applied at this point, it's possible. Um, and I would be sort of cautiously optimistic that we will have something within 12 to 18 months. I'm Paul McGonigal. I'm a professor in the Department of Pharmacology and Physiology, the director of the Drug Discovery and Development Program, and a co-director of the Division of Interdisciplinary and Career-Oriented Programs. My name is Michelle Kutzler. I am a, an associate professor of medicine and microbiology and immunology, and I'm also the assistant dean of faculty development at Drexel University College of Medicine. But one of the first things that we'll do as we begin to develop the concept of the vaccine is we have to understand the SARS-CoV-2 antigens. And what I mean by that is we first study the virus to understand which viral proteins are responsible for causing disease and which viral proteins are expressed and elicit an immune response but don't cause disease. So for example, with SARS-CoV-2, the viral particle is coated with these spike proteins. And we, through testing, we know that just expression of those spike proteins doesn't lead to disease in patients. So, and importantly, that spike protein binds to the um, infected person's cells. So if we can encode that spike protein in the vaccine and elicit antibodies against that, that protein, we can um, prevent infection. The FDA requires that any vaccine or drug must be tested in human clinical trials to ensure that it's sufficiently safe and effective. These clinical trials are divided into three phases that involve greater numbers of subjects at each phase. Phase one trials demonstrate that the vaccine is safe, starting with a very low dose of the vaccine and then increasing the dose uh, to the likely therapeutic dose. The next step is then determining whether the vaccine is stimulating the production of antibodies, whether those antibodies inactivate the virus, and whether the production of antibodies is related uh, to the dose of the vaccine. Phase two trials are often called proof of concept trials. And here, uh, subjects who are at risk of getting infected are administered the vaccine to assess whether the vaccine continues to produce antibodies and protects most or all of the subjects from getting infected. Different doses of vaccine are often tested at this stage to identify what the most effective dose is. They will also want to know how long the protect protection persists. Phase three trials involve treating a large number of subjects who are at risk with the optimal dose and confirming that the protection observed in the phase three trials generalizes to a larger and more diverse population. And it's important to recognize that 90% of uh, all uh, drugs, and, drugs and vaccines in clinical trials fail. However, in this case, vaccine developers are very, working very closely with the FDA to compress the trials as much as possible by doing steps in parallel and there are multiple vaccines in development, so there is reason to hope that an effective vaccine can be developed uh, faster than it ever has in the past. There's a huge pipeline of over 100 vaccines that are in clinical trials, and as they begin to meet their milestones, or maybe not meet milestones, you know, that pipeline is going to decrease as we move to the market. But in the end, we're hoping to have more than one vaccine that will be effective and useful. Um, and, and we'll need a lot of companies that are willing to, to manufacture and to help build enough doses to, for distribution. So this is going to be a combined effort from multiple companies to really have a successful product on the market. One of the unprecedented aspects of this vaccine development is the fact that manufacturing is being scaled up for a number of different vaccines at risk. Normally companies wait until they have clinical confirmation that their vaccines are, are effective and likely to be approved. But in this case, because of the, the desperate demand of Bill Gates and others and companies, uh, private companies are willing to invest uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in uh, setting up the manufacturing and getting the manufacturing and ramping up the manufacturing so that when a virus, a vaccine is finally approved, uh, they, it can be manufactured quickly enough to have maximal effect. Every 10 years, we see the emergence of these novel viruses. Uh, so I think this is something that's going to stay with us. And what's beautiful about the synthetic vaccine is that we can predict strains uh, and the vaccines can be generated and synthesized to, 
to uh, be consensus, meaning they can be specific for multiple strains of this virus. And so that's the beauty of this new recombinant DNA technology and, and RNA technology that's being used. So, um, you know, I'm really, I think there's a great future for uh, vaccines that can prevent pandemic disease because of these new technologies.